This tale unfolds in the state of Virginia, USA, where Theodore and Maria tied the knot at the tender age of 19, a mere month after their nuptials. Maria made the joyful discovery that she was expecting a child. The couple was overjoyed and busily prepared for the arrival of their firstborn, adorning a cozy nursery, procuring a tiny wardrobe, crib, and an assortment of toys to welcome their new addition. They eagerly anticipated the prospect of becoming a small, happy family. However, when the time came for Maria to give birth, and an urgent hospital trip became necessary, Theodore had to seek assistance from a friend for transportation. Regrettably, his friend's vehicle had broken down and was unfit for travel, leaving the young man fraught with anxiety. In a panic, he promptly dialed for an ambulance. Tragically, the ambulance arrived later than expected, and Maria collapsed while her husband tried to console her with a warm embrace. Once the healthcare professionals finally arrived, Maria was swiftly transported to the hospital and immediately taken into the delivery room. The anxious young husband awaited news. But when the nurse emerged moments later, she delivered a distressing update. She informed him that Maria was unable to deliver naturally and required surgery. A disquieting revelation that weighed heavily on his mind. After enduring agonizing hours of uncertainty, the doctor finally emerged from the operating room. His face ashen. He broke the devastating news to the young man that his beloved wife had tragically passed away during the surgery. Yet, miraculously, their child had been saved at the eleventh hour. Theodore was utterly shattered by the doctor's words and began screaming in despair, unable to fathom that his cherished wife, with whom he had envisioned a lifetime together, had been irrevocably taken from him. His world, once filled with happiness, crumbled like a fragile house of cards, overwhelmed by grief. He accompanied the medical staff to Maria's room to see his son but found himself unable to hold the child. Consumed by sorrow, understanding his profound mourning, the nurses sought to console him, but opted not to hand over the baby, fearing he might inadvertently harm himself. The doctor advised Theodore to return home, and come back a week later to retrieve his infant. Yet, when the appointed time arrived, Theodore failed to appear to claim his child, steadfastly refusing to acknowledge his son's existence. Maria's grandmother, upon learning of her great-grandson's predicament, rushed to the hospital without hesitation, and took the child under her wing. She wasted no time in providing the necessary care and essentials for the baby. Initially, she made numerous attempts to convince Theodore to take responsibility for his son, but he persistently declined and remained unresponsive. Four months later, the determined grandmother resolved to visit Theodore's residence but found it vacant. A concerned neighbor disclosed that he frequently retreated to a nearby grove, where he often secluded himself. Acting swiftly, she proceeded to the grove, yearning to encounter her nephew, and engage in a heartfelt conversation. Upon her arrival, she found the man perched on the railings, clutching a bottle of wine tightly. She approached, attempting to initiate a conversation, but his thoughts were clouded, and he displayed no inclination to engage in dialogue. The grandmother carefully placed the baby on her lap. But there was no reaction from him. It became apparent to her that she could not sway his resolve. And she made the difficult decision to return home. From that point onward, 
the young boy grew up contentedly under the care of his great-grandmother and the family dog a mixed breed canine with a deep affection for children the grandmother often remarked that the dog proved to be a more nurturing figure for the child and so the little boy embraced his life with the dog and his great-grandmother reconciled to the fact that his father was unable to take on the role of caregiver however about three months later theodore arrived at his grandmother's doorstep with a markedly different demeanor he revealed that he had made progress in coping with his wife's passing and managing his mental struggles he expressed a newfound readiness to embark on a fresh start and assume responsibility for his son initially she found it hard to believe how swiftly he had transformed but she rejoiced in witnessing his genuine eagerness to care for the child in the end she consented to entrusting him with the baby and assisted him in establishing the necessary arrangements for the child's return the grandmother departed with a heavy heart but also with hope that her grandson could offer the child a joyful life within a loving family. She continued to visit her grandson daily and was astonished by his commitment and nurturing disposition as a father. He had even formed a relationship with a woman named Olivia, who appeared to be a positive influence on Theodore. She was convinced that the baby was now in capable hands and would thrive within a caring family. Regrettably, this conviction would later be proven wrong. One day, as the grandmother tended to her garden, she noticed the absence of her dog. It dawned on her that the dog had managed to slip through a small hole in the fence, a repair that had been long overdue. While she was relieved to see the dog return safely, something peculiar caught her attention the dog was carrying an object in its mouth as she drew nearer she made the shocking discovery that the dog was holding her late granddaughter's baby in its teeth stunned she swiftly retrieved the child and rushed to theodore's residence there she uncovered a horrifying scene Theodore was on the verge of committing a terrible act. But she intervened just in time and promptly alerted the authorities. When the police arrived, Theodore confessed to everything without hesitation. He had descended into a deep depression following his breakup with Olivia, leading to a resurgence of alcoholism. Feeling utterly hopeless and desperate, he believed he could never provide a better life for his baby. So, he made the grim decision to take his child to the railway with the intention of abandoning him there. Thankfully, the family dog, which had developed a profound bond with the boy, sensed that something was amiss and trailed him to the railway. Upon arrival, the dog gently took hold of the child and carefully removed him from the tracks delivering him to the safety of his great-grandmother. In this dire moment, the dog assumed the role of a savior, shielding the child from his father's desperate act. Today, the child lives a contented life in the care of his great-grandmother, alongside their loyal dog, nurtured in an environment filled with love and security. He has never had to worry about his safety. This poignant tale deeply resonated with all who heard it and gained notoriety in the city. It serves as a powerful testament to the transformative impact that love and attention from animals can have on a child's life and underscores the critical importance of providing a nurturing and secure upbringing for our young ones to thrive. The narrative beautifully exemplifies the depth of affection and significance that can arise from the bonds between animals and children. Max, the family dog, emerged as a genuine guardian, 
rescuing the boy from the tragic fate that seemed inevitable. Thanks to Max's intervention, the child is growing up in happiness. Enveloped by the love and care of his great-grandmother and their beloved canine companion. If you found this story touching, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. We also have two more videos available that you may find interesting. If you share our passion for animals, we encourage you to explore the other videos on our channel and share this video with your friends. Additionally, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this story in the comments section. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Reciprocating kindness has always been a traditional virtue of human beings. This kind of emotion is not limited to humans. Animals are the same. Everything has emotion. In fact, animals have more pure emotions. They also know how to be grateful. If you help them, they will I will repay you twice. So no matter whether we encounter humans or small animals in deep trouble, we should lend a helping hand without hesitation. An uncle lived in a stag by chance and often fed it. Unexpectedly, 30 minutes later, a wonderful scene appeared at the door of the uncle's house. What happened? Robert loved small animals very much when he was very young. He often asked his parents to take him on an adventure in the forest during the holidays. Because he could meet different kinds of small animals in this way. When he became an adult, Robert resolutely moved to live in a wooden house near the forest. This day is a day for Robert to rest. He is preparing to go to the forest as usual. Looking forward to some unexpected gains today. Not long after Robert walked in the forest. He heard a strange sound not far away. He went out to be curious. And Robert walked in the direction of the sound to find out. But the next scene made him never expect it. A deer was accidentally stuck in a swamp. At this time, the deer was writhing in the swamp trying to get out of the swamp, but the more it struggled, the deeper it sank, until only its head remained above the water. Robert didn't think too much. He only knew that if the trapped deer was not rescued in time, then the deer's life would be in danger. Robert immediately took off his clothes, and walked into the swamp without hesitation. He slowly swam to the side of the deer and kept cleaning the mud around its hooves with his hands. The deer struggled a few times, but still failed to jump ashore. Robert had no choice but to pull it towards him, carried it on his neck, and walked towards the shore bit by bit. He clearly understood that in order to get the deer out of the predicament, he had to carry it across the entire swamp, which was full of rotten mud. It was very difficult for Robert to take every step. Because of the weight on his body, he sank into waist-deep mud several times. Fortunately, Robert had more experience, and finally walked out of the swamp by walking on his knees. In order to prevent the deer from straying into the swamp again, Robert carried it into the forest and placed it in a clearing. At this time, the deer was exhausted, and didn't even have the strength to stand up. After several hours, the deer finally regained its vitality. With Robert's support, the deer stood up tremblingly and walked into the forest bit by bit. When it was time to say goodbye, Robert turned around and walked down the mountain. The deer stopped and watched the back of the benefactor quietly as if expressing his gratitude in his own way. Many years later, Robert had long forgotten about saving the deer. But what he didn't expect was that the deer appeared at his door again. That day, Robert went out to work as usual. 
and he found a deer at the door of his house. Robert stepped forward. And he didn't know why a deer appeared here. Just when he was puzzled, the little deer came to him and gently rubbed its head against Robert's body. And Robert also gently stroked the little deer's head. And then suddenly realized that he recognized the little deer was the one he saved back. The deer looks a lot bigger than before. But its body doesn't look strong. It should be that it has not eaten for a long time. And its body looks a little weak. Robert hurriedly took out food from the house. And fed it to the deer. Robert looked at the deer eating happily. Showing a gratified smile. The next day. Before Robert went out. He heard something walking back and forth outside. He came to the door curiously and was shocked when he opened the door. There was a herd of deer staring at him outside the door. The one who took the lead was yesterday's little deer. Only then did Robert realize that the deer had brought his own group with him. Robert guessed that the deer may have encountered a food crisis. And Robert's good reputation for charity had already spread among the deer. Robert felt both helpless and happy and then took out a lot of food from the house and fed it to the big family. In the days to come, the herd of deer and Robert formed a harmonious eating and drinking relationship. Every time it was meal time, the deers would come to his house to eat. Robert is also very generous and enthusiastically brought out food to entertain this special group of friends. Robert enjoys the joy of feeding and is healed by the lovely deer at the same time. The moving story between the deer and humans does not stop here. A British country girl also rescued a deer, but unexpectedly received the deer's grace. What touching story happened? 24-year-old and was born in the beautiful Basingstoke, Hampshire, England. Her family runs a ranch. The yard of the farmhouse is very large. And she often patronizes some small animals. In the surrounding mountains. One spring. And heard some noises outside the farmhouse. And her father and she planned to go out to see what was going on. On the empty lawn. A group of little guys were lying powerlessly on the ground. And not far away was an angry doe. It seems that the little guy's mother didn't find a good place to give birth. According to Anne's ranch, there are two herds of deer, both of which have their own territories. And this little guy was born on a disputed lawn. A female deer in the deer herd rushed over aggressively. And the mother deer who was still resting soon, after giving birth was attacked and she also fled in a hurry. Left behind are cubs whose eyes aren't even fully open, and who can't stand up. And then her father ran to them and found that the deer, which had only seen the sun not long ago, looked very weak. It was motionless and Anne's father wrapped it in a small blanket. The father said that it was breathing weakly, and it would not survive tonight if it was thrown outside. It was so pitiful, and begged her father to adopt the deer. At least let it go through the dangerous period. Before sending it back to the wild, the father and daughter finally adopted the little deer. The deer recovered fairly quickly. Soon after, the deer was able to stand up tremblingly like a cub of the same age. It's just that it was timid at the beginning and it would get scared when it made a slight noise. Fortunately, and was very patient. Since she proposed to adopt the deer, she would take care of the deer's daily life by herself. The deer grows rapidly in this warm human family. When it is four months old, it is already a cub that needs more space to move around and can eat grass and try to cultivate the deer's ability 
to survive in the wild and let it communicate with the deer. When the deer was brought to the herd for the first time, the little guy was shaking and looked terrified. But this time, its appearance was not attacked by the same kind again. The herd accepted him to graze beside him, including his mother. And he also reaccepted the little deer. In summer, the deer has lost its childishness and turned into a beautiful little male deer. He enjoyed being back among the deer and then knew that was where he should be. When and came home on the weekend, she recognized the deer from a distance from the deer. The deer also saw her and rushed towards her immediately. It ran over to Anne's pants and rubbed her hand and didn't know what to say. She squatted down and gave the deer a hug and kiss. Thank you for remembering us. And knew that maybe one day in the future, the deer would no longer go through the deer herd looking for her. But what would never fade would be those beautiful memories. Although the race is crossed, the feelings of animals and humans are interlinked. You can understand each other's mind. Without language communication, when you express your kindness, you will be rewarded with kindness. Therefore, we should not be stingy with our love for small animals. Treat animals well and live in harmony with them.